Good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to show you what I do with the mushroom butts. I know this has been a long time uh, that I've been saying I was going to I was going to show you guys, and I never did. But I am going to show you today. Now, normally they're a lot longer the stems, but you know I can't guarantee the size of the uh, the stems when I buy these mushrooms. These are not the oyster mushrooms. They're the shiitake. And sometimes I get some really nice stems. And sometimes, well, I get them how I get them. Okay. There we go. And we're going to put this aside. So here we are. We have our mushroom butts. So the first thing you want to do... Not sure if any of you remember what this is. This, believe it or not, we used to be able to pound meat with it. But since we're vegans and we don't pound meat, we pound mushrooms with it. So this was done. <laughs> my father made me this one. So it means a lot to me. So this will never leave my presence. But basically, you want to take this and you want to give it a good whack and just break it down like this. Could even break it down even smaller if you want. There you go. Do you see this? There's two ways of doing this. Now, if you look at these, they look like tiny ribs. You remember how you used to buy those little, those little ribs on meat? Well, that's what this looks like. So we will start breaking them apart with our hands once we've given them a good smash. And we're just going to make a little bit. We're not going to make a lot. And what's nice about this, I'm not sure if you could look at it really close up. It kind of looks like, see what it looks like? And they're dry. They're not like the king mushrooms where this will resemble as if you're doing a meat dish. Now, you have many options. You could take this and you could simply uh, season it and then make like a pulled pork dish or do what I'm going to do and make almost like meat nuggets. I remember people coming to my house and they said, what is this? I said, well, my father made that. It's a, it's a meat pounder. And what are you going to do with it now that you're vegan? I says, I pound mushrooms. So that's not going anywhere. I am keeping that. Now, again, you know, if you have a lot more mushrooms, you get a bigger batch. But, you know, I'm going to work with what I have. So the batch is going to be a little small. You could always save these and you can freeze them, believe it or not, and then pound them when you're ready. You could do it that way. So when you do make your dish, you're going to have a larger amount. And if you notice, with these mushrooms, even though I pounded them, they're not wet whatsoever. They're still very dry. But they're not the shiitake mushrooms that you're going to find at... Um, where they have that very thin, thin, woodsy um, stem. Here, I'm just going to put them in my bowl. I should have used a smaller bowl. But it is what it is. I lost my mushroom. I have to look for that. Erica, can you see where that mushroom went? See how they're still dry? I mean, they have a tiny little bit of moisture, but nothing really to say, oh, wow, look at all the, it's so wet, what am I going to do with it? So these will stay nice and dry for you. Plus, it has a very strong mushroom flavor, these ones here. Uh, you, these you will find at your local 
Asian market. You will not find these at any regular stores. But I have seen some nice button mushrooms that have a nice big butt and I have used those. Uh, they're a little more wet than this but they're still usable. So if you can't find the shiitake, uh, check out those creminis. Um, I've also done it with my portobello. Like I said, they're not as strong flavoring as this. Uh, they're not as dry as these ones. JJ, did you steal my mushroom? Is it you who took my mushroom? Okay. Okay, so, done. I did lose a piece of mushroom somewhere. Where it's gone, have no idea. Okay, so here we go. We've got our mushroom. Uh, like I said, this is a small batch. I'm just showing you how to do this. But if you want to be able to do something like this, start saving your butts on your mushrooms. Just remove them right to the base and bag them and put them in the freezer. They will be a little wetter when you pull them out, but you're still, or crush them and then freeze them. So this way, when you're done, you're going to have your loose meat and you won't even need to add any liquid to it because they're going to come out of the, uh, the freezer and they're going to have moisture in it. So there's different ways of doing this. So uh, I'm going to show it to you fresh. Like I said, it's a small batch. It's not something that um, I'm going to have a, a large amount of meat. But the point is just to give you ideas on what you can do with this type of mushrooms. And again, they have to be fresh mushrooms, not dry mushrooms. Otherwise, you won't be able to get it to look like it's that pork meat. Now, um, or the shredded meat. Uh, what you can do is, if you want to go just very simple and natural, where I do this myself, is throw this in a pan with a lot of sauces and a lot of seasoning, and you've got your pulled pork recipe. This is not like the, uh, when you use the, um, the king mushrooms. Those are very wet. You're going to get a soggy mess with that. These are going to be a little more, uh, these are going to be a little more, uh, dry, so it has more of that uh, drier meat for people who are looking to try and reproduce uh, a meat dish uh, or they're just missing that meat dish and they want to do something that can give them the satisfaction and not have to go out and harm any animal. So here we are. We're going to just show you what I'm going to do. Okay, we are going to add a little bit of mushroom powder, not much, just a little bit, because we're putting mushroom on mushroom, but this is just going to help dry it up a little more. Uh, now to this, you can add any kind of seasoning you have. You could follow my beefless seasoning, you could do my uh, chicken type seasoning, you could do my occasion. I have a lot of seasonings that I have on my YouTube, so pick one of those, or if you don't want to start making those, use whatever you have to uh, put this together. You could also use a little bit of ketchup, and I'm going to show you how. Now these are going to be completely gluten free. I also make them, uh, I also make this recipe with the, uh, the Vital Wheat Gluten, which gives it even a nicer stringy uh, texture. But a lot of people have been asking me to show them how to make gluten free meat. And that's what I'm going to do. This is one. I have another one in the works. Uh, you need a lot of starch. So if you see that you've got more starch than you have mushroom, that's okay because once we add a little bit of uh, moisture to this, it's going to pick up that starch. So don't be afraid of it. We're going to use a little bit of oat flour. Here we go. We're going to add We've got some paprika. We've got a little bit of garlic. A little bit of onion. A little bit of black pepper. A little bit of my Cajun, not a lot. 
We're going to add some olive oil to that for fat. We're going to put some good olive oil to this one. There we go. We're just going to add some flour. And because this is uh, gluten-free, we're using a soy flour. You can use a chickpea flour if you want. Uh, this should be almost, maybe a little more. Now, you can use a little bit of ketchup or a little bit of barbecue sauce. I'm using the Diana. I'll tell you why I have a hard time. Look, you see what I do? I just kind of poke... The liner underneath so I don't get a lot at the same time there so that is why it's coming out a little a little stiff I don't peel it back I just like I said I just poke it okay so here's our uh, mushroom pieces we are gonna add one at a time that's one maybe two plate by ear if it gets too wet you're gonna have to add more if it gets too wet, you're going to have to add more um, more flour. Don't forget the mushroom will let out some kind of moisture. Use your hands. Don't be afraid to. If you have to, add a little extra oil rather than water. Wrong bottle. <laughs> Too many bottles of oil. Just a little extra. There we go. Oil. And if you want to leave out the oil, leave out the oil and use a little extra either ketchup or barbecue sauce. Whatever you want to use. Okay. Now, you have the option of either steaming this and then pulling it apart. Notice how it looks like meat inside. Or you could take these and make little bundles of nuggets. And then they could be cooked. They could either be steamed or they can be cooked uh, in a pan with a little bit of water. You can steam it that way. So you can make them as flat as you want. And if you're gonna make them more like a nugget, you want to uh, put them in a steamer where they're going to cook a little longer. It really is up to you. Or like I said, cook the whole thing, wrap it in, uh, wrap it in uh, some parchment and then aluminum paper. And you can steam this first and then you can pull it apart like you would meat. So that is really up to you. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do for these. Notice how little water I use because the mushroom has um, the mushroom has its own um, its own moisture. I wish I had more mushrooms to show you. That would have been a lot better. But unfortunately, that's all the mushrooms I had to show you. Okay, we're gonna add just a little bit of olive oil, and we're just gonna make them about that. Size. You could also, like I said, make them that they look like little ribettes. It's really up to you. Now these are completely gluten free, but you can make this with vital wheat gluten if you're okay with it. Now, I'm not sure if any of you have seen my meatball recipe. We're going to do the same cooking procedure as, the, uh, as my meatball recipe. Remember, if you don't want to use barbecue sauce, you can, simply use, um, you can simply use ketchup. If you don't want to use any of that, use more seasoning and use a little bit of water. But remember the water you want to use a little at a time. You do not want to go crazy with that water because then you're not going to have anything that you're going to be able to shape into any type of form. You're going to have a big mess. So this is one of my gluten-free recipes, guys. I have another one in the works.
and I will be sharing that with you too. So right now I am just going to give it a little browning. Just going to flip them over so they all get coated. Remember you could always steam these if you don't want to do them this way. You know you have to play around with your food and see what works best for you if you don't want to um, if you don't want to use a lot of oil, leave the oils out. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, too much oil. I'm not doing the oil. So then don't do the oil. Okay, so we're going to put this, since it started, down to a medium. Because we don't want to burn them. But we want the outside of this to get a little, just a little browned. And that's going to help hold everything together too. And then we're going to add water and we're going to do the same thing that we do to our meatballs. And you know what? This stuff isn't a necessity in our lives. I'm telling you, I really hardly eat stuff like this. I know my husband does. My daughter enjoys this sometimes. And I do too. I'm not going to lie. I do. I eat uh, mostly raw, but... Uh, if I have something that I've made, of course, I'm going to want to taste it. I'm going to want to eat some because it is good. It's not that it's not good. But it's not something that's a, a necessity in our life. I know a lot of people are saying, why are you cooking meat-like stuff when you're vegan? Why don't you eat more plant-based? I do. But not everybody wants to eat that way. So, you know what? I'm going to make dishes that's going to make everybody happy, not just one person. Not just a few. Sorry. And these will have to get recooked again once the steaming is done. Just to get them nice and golden. Now, you're going to need a lid. And we're going to add just a little bit of water to this. And we're going to close it. And put it on a lower setting. We do not want these to break down. Now these will be a little more delicate because they are gluten free. But if you're using Vital Wheat Gluten, I'm telling you, these will hold their own without a problem. But you have to be a little more careful because they are, uh, oh, sorry about that guys, because they are gluten free. You do have to be just a little more careful with these ones. And just flip them over. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Some more water and down it goes better to always keep it low this way they don't over stick on you and just come by and check them once in a while that they shouldn't they should easily move around I'm not sure if you can see it you can simply just move them around and you know that they're doing its thing. When they start moving around, you know they're cooking. So, they look like meat, don't they? Yet, they're not meat. So this would go great on a little stir fry. And when you steam, steam them, it's going to take about 20 minutes, I would say. But on a low steam, you do not want to cook these on high because you will end up losing your pieces. Because, like I said, vital wheat gluten will hold its structure. And when it's not, it's a delicate flour. You want it to hold its own. 
try and get as much moisture out of you out of them after when you cook them this last time so just keep cooking them down remember when you make these the more mushrooms you have the less flour you have the better it is if you don't have enough mushrooms and you're using way too much flour then you're making dumplings so you want to have mostly mushroom stems you see when you're able to flip them up flip them over without any kind of sticking you know they're almost done Okay, so I'm going to put these in a plate. So there you go guys very simple dish and a little bit of bok choy and there's the mushrooms those are the mushroom heads and the mushroom butts are inside these beautiful little nuggets and I hope you like this recipe and if you do share with your friend give it a try let me know how you like it and guess what guys I'm gonna see you in my next video for more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.